Instruction was. My very important instruction was when I'm talking, you're not. That was it. At that point, you should have just been, no matter what you're talking about, unless it's some sort of like somebody's life is in jeopardy, it would be better if you did not talk. Anyways, today's little topic, fifth grade, before we got so off the tracks there, is a continuation of what we've been doing, and it's subtraction. Subtraction with um, more mixed numbers. And after it, you'll say, well, I'm not even sure why we even had to talk about this because it's something that easy. Here's our example problem. Let's say you have 7 minus 2 and a third. The only difference between this and what we've done before is I don't believe we had big numbers over here, I think. Let me look and see. Let me make sure I'm not going too close. Yeah, that's it right there. Just like always, everybody knows the first step when it comes to subtracting fractions is Maggie. Look at that. See how fast you guys pick up on that? Right, up, and down. By the way, that might not, other teachers may not care. I do on this one. So 7 minus 2 and 1 third. Oh. And here is where things kind of hit the brakes there, because you will notice that I don't have a fraction next to 7. I can't take 1 third away from nothing. So guess what I have to do? Andrew, what do you suppose I have to do? What happens in subtraction when you can't take something away from something else? I have to borrow. And what am I going to borrow from? 7. The 7, it's going to become a 6. What do we have to borrow? And then the question of the universe is, if I have this borrowing from the 6, what fraction am I going to make over here? Knowing that that fraction has to be 1, because that's what I took away from there. Now I, I would make you list all your choices, but I think the choices would be endless, right? Fractions that equal 1 are 2 over 2, 3 over 3, 4 over 4. 5 over 5, 6 over 6, 7 over 7, should I keep going? 8 over 8, yeah. 9 over 9, 10 over 10, and so on and so on. For infinity, we don't want to write down all the choices. Which one of those fractions am I going to use and why? Julia? 3 over 3. Because? On the, the little fraction part that has 3 on the bottom. Exactly. Because the fraction that I do have has a 3 on this bottom. I want a 3 on that bottom because we like fractions that have the same denominators. So I use 3 over 3. And that's why, you know, in your assignment, remember that yesterday's problem had something about 7 and 6 over 6 that equaled 8 or whatever it is. Well, 6 and 3 thirds is the same thing as 7, but I took that away from the 7 so that I could work with this other fraction. And what is 3 thirds minus 1 third? Nathan? 2 thirds. 2 thirds. And what then you have to do 2 minus 6, which is 4 and 2 thirds. 4 and 2 thirds. So 3 is borrow and then subtract. It's not that hard, but they, they take you one little step at a time. How about this one? What would 17 minus 3 
and three fifths feet. Now, a lot of times people think that they can do this in their head, and they tell me the answer to that is 14 and 2 fifths, but to which I'd say, no, that is incorrect. People always forget about that model. Thing. So do go ahead and do this one. Most of you write, and write it out. This is not mental math at this point. In your life, someday you'll be able to do that. Later. Write it out. Get me an answer. Let's see if we can get this all. Did you actually do it, Colin, or are you just doing this mentally? I did. You did do it out? Perfect. 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 It's perfect. If you borrow from the 17, you borrow from the 7, it becomes a 6. What fraction am I putting over there? Five, five fifths. Very good. Five fifths. Three fifths from five fifths is? Two fifths. Fifth. And three from 16 three. is 13. Yes. And I see this all the time, like when you go into stores or whatever, or people, they always forget. Like if, if I asked you, you know, you go into a store and you buy, um, I don't know, you buy a watermelon that costs five and a half dollars. It's an expensive watermelon. And you give the cash register person a $10 bill. A lot of people think if you're taking five and a half away from 10 that you get five and a half. But they forget that you have to borrow it order to do that. Uh, just like what is, you know, what is five dollars minus three and three quarters dollars, or three dollars and seventy-five cents? Well, if you write that out, five dollars minus three and three fourths. We have to borrow from this five and make it a four. What fraction do I have over there? Four fourths. Four fourths, three fourths from four fourths is one fourth, and three and four is one. One and one fourth. <laughs> Any problems with that? I don't think so. No. 